El gobierno sirio no se presentó este martes ante la Corte Internacional de Justicia de la ONU, donde Canadá y los Países Bajos denuncian que el régimen de Al-Assad ha violado la Convención contra la Tortura. Los dos países pidieron medidas preliminares contra el cese inmediato del uso de la tortura y la revelación de los lugares donde se mantiene a los detenidos. What matters is, is not whether they showed up or didn't. What matters is that uh, the evidence was put before a public hearing. Uh, a range of evidence from all sorts of torture and sexual violence and rape and enforced disappearance has been taking place since at least 2011. And the entire world heard that that was happening and is still happening. Decenas de sirios protestaron frente al tribunal, también Wafa, cuyo padre desapareció hace 10 años. Realistically speaking, I don't think that this case will help by releasing or freeing anyone, but I hope that it will at least help uh, uh, maybe stopping the torture and the ill treatment that thousands, hundreds of thousands of detainees are being exposed to on daily basis. Se trata de la primera vez que Siria tiene que rendir cuentas ante un tribunal internacional. Many people here today were hoping that this case would shine a spotlight once again on the crimes being committed by Syria. Uh, at a time when President Bashar al-Assad is being welcomed back on the world stage, Syria rejoined the Arab League earlier this year. He's also been invited to COP23 later this year. However, timing is everything, and there was very little media attention here today as this case was overshadowed by events happening just next door. This is Fernand Van Tetz reporting for Euronews. The Hague.